three-dimensional flux field in DNA, but it control, it's, the respo- it's responsible for the hel- helical anatomical structure of DNA. It controls all cleavage and receptor sites in the molecules of DNA. And uh, it, it is responsible for all information encryption that takes place in mitosis <laughs> during um, DNA um, duplication, sister strand duplication. Right. Um, his response was, well, we know DNA is made out of phosphates, and all phosphates have a negative electric charge. So he said, of course, there's going to be an associated magnetic field with any negative electric charge. The difference is, is inside this magnetic field, I am able to observe the, at the center. We have electricity, and in the center of electricity, we have magnetism. Magnetism goes to center. Um, in the center of magnetism, I have found a flux, F-L-U-X. Mm-hmm. Why I call it a flux field? Because only magnetism can respond instantaneously, simultaneously fast enough to give slippage and free play to this flux. You could call it spirit, prana, chi. Sometimes it's called dark matter. Ether. Sometimes it's called uh, uh, ether was believed to exist, and then after they... I won't go into the history of it, but you're, uh, you're probably familiar with it. Uh, it was the Mendelssohn experiment mm. in the 1920s. Yeah. Um, Which was really not a very valid experiment, in my opinion. Well, Einstein's response was, that's where they, for the audience, they measured the drag of the Earth through space and said that there was nothing resisting it. Mm. So they said, and prior to that, most of our great-great-grandparents believed in what was called the lumiferous ether, that the universe had this invisible ether. When they used to do radio shows in the early 1900s, they used to say, this show's coming to you over the ether waves. Right, right. And it was just sort of this general sort of sea that everything floated in. And so when they came to the conclusion it didn't exist, uh, of course I wasn't there, but it is refuted that Einstein said, the only other choice is that it's an inertia ether. Hmm. And that's what I believe, and that's exactly true. It's an ether that emanates from the center of the nucleus of every atom. We call it call it spirit. We call it black dark energy, dark matter. Call it um, tachyon, monopole. Maxwell postulated an electrical uh, uh, postulated a particle that semitized all his electrical equations. He referred to it as the monopole. Hmm. It's real. Hmm. So when I wind these coils, even though they barely approximate the schematics that that I require. They, they still produce tremendous output, greater output, because this discovery has such a huge margin of tolerance right. that no matter how much you only approximate it or abuse it, it still works. Um, wow. All right. Well, look, uh, we're at 25 after the hour, so that's a good place to take a little break here. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll come back, and we will talk more about the mathematics. I want to talk a little bit about... Um, just where these ideas came from. We'll look at the sequences, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about some of these diagrams that are on the website, okay? Um, I, will, I will add that when we go into the mathematics next, and I do, I will enjoy it. It's going to be a hell of a roller coaster ride for your audience, but I'm game. Well, we'll... we'll, we'll uh, I'm going to keep it very simple. Everyone thinks that what I do is hard. The truth is it's, it's on the level of an elementary school child. I agree, and, I, and as, I, as I go through the website, uh, it's... There, there, there is a visual component uh, to it that I wish that people could be able to see, but I still think that it can be pretty reasonably described uh, uh, on the airwaves here. So we'll, we'll do it, and, um, and we, we will, uh, if, it, uh, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll move on to something I'll, else. I'll okay? follow your lead. I, yeah, and, we've got, and, and we're not going to get stuck on it. I mean, I think it's important to see where this stuff comes from, but I think uh, it's, it's as important to talk about this is Mike Hagan, and my guest is Marco Roden. You can find information about Marco at www.rodenmath.com and also at rodenaerodynamics.org. All right, so Marco, uh, we are going to attempt, I think here, at least for a few minutes and see how it goes, to talk a little bit about the foundation of where uh, the mathematics came from or comes from that was able to... Uh, to allow you to develop the coil, which is what which has been the focus of our conversation for the last 15 minutes. Now, this coil, to reiterate, is something that has been tested, and it's a coil that is different than a typical coil, and it has to do with the way that the copper is wound, and I think people and, and we'll talk more about it, but it has to do with 
uh, the, the geometry, I guess, involved in the wind of the copper. Would that be accurate, Marco? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, the only secret ingredient is the geometry, is the winding, and the other, forgive the term, trick, is to know where not to put the copper, where you leave the uh, spaces for it to, so to speak, respirate and breathe, where the magnetic underpinning nested vortices occur. Right, these vortices that we'll talk about a little bit, uh, a little bit later here. So, sure. Okay, so... Uh, so we're working backwards, and I like that. We have this coil. We know that it's been tested. We know people have been astonished by what they've seen by it. And we know that it has been very rudimentary versions of the coil. In other words, they haven't been developed uh, in a real accurate manner. In other words, you think it could be done a lot better. They are, I would incorporate a, a few features that would radically enhance it. One's called a, a changing aspect ratio. I could go on and on, but okay. I'll, I'll continue to listen. All right, so... Um, all right, so, so we know this much. So now we're going to back up a little bit and say, okay, well, how did you figure out that we needed to wind the coil like the way we need to wind it? And now we get into this fundamental mathematical formula or sequence. It's something that you actually call the mathematical fingerprint of God. Right. And again, you, uh, you, you make no small claims. And uh, uh, the simple right. fact about this that's, is... That's why there's an article by Russell Blake and other scientists. I'm very confrontational to, to my peers, and they have no choice but to dissect and eventually then prove my work's correct. Because my claim is find one error and the whole work is trashed. Right, right. And I mean, you're, you're just laying it out there for everybody else's scrutiny. So, mm -hmm. so far, it has, uh, it's been able to weather all of those tests. All right, so here's what we're going to do. People, if you're on the web, and I suggest you get on the web, go over to rodenmath.com or rodenaerodynamics.org.